Okay, so this is the image analysis app that Chattish has created. And uh, you go to image.cbayram.com. <clears throat> it's just uh, for the prototype for hosting it so people can try it out. Um, you need to provide a Google account email that uh, Chattish can register in the background. And when you get here, it will ask you to sign in if you haven't done so before. Um, so I will sign in with the account and then it will give you options here to uh, create a new analysis. Let's see here, just close that down for a second. Uh, so click on create new analysis. You'll be able to upload uh, a file by choosing a, a file. And in my case, I need to go to input files and I'm going to select um, counts for Python for cassava. I'm going to open that and then it's going to be loading it. I'm going to choose the corresponding metadata file. So that was the counts and this is the metadata file. I'm going to open that and you can see once it's loaded them it uh, gives them there <clears throat> and the file prefix I'm just going to call it test uh, cas nga then I need to put in values that I want to use for uh, min sample you can use these tool tips to see what it is so this threshold from missing data um, for actually samples, I have to get them to correct that because that's incorrect. And this is for the markers. UMAP seed, we just defaulted to 42, but you could use something else. You need to set epsilon and cut height. Those I'm going to go and uh, look them up for this. So parameters, cassava. NGA, you can see here 0.7 and 0.1 is what was used. So I'm going to use that 0.7 and 0.1, and it happens to be default to that. Admix cutoff, I'm just going to set it really, really high so that it uh, <clears throat> will output the divergence score without flagging anything as an admixture. And then I'm going to select for it to output uh, both the bar chart and the evaluate epsilon here. So now I'm going to run analysis. It kicks off that analysis and it tells you that it's running up here. If you scroll down it, you also see that it's running analysis there. And depending on that, well, it's completed. So it ran pretty quickly. And here you can see it gives you a little bit of a preview of what was outputted in terms of the .csv. So it has the embedding for the UMAP, tells you what the cluster is, tells you what short name was used, uh, gives you the divergence. You can maybe round this um, in the future uh, by updating the Python code. It gives you what the variety is, and it also gives you a country ID. And then you can minimize these or maximize these. You can also uh, download it if you want, and it'll download. And then it outputs also um, a series of uh, graphics. So there's the bar chart for land race. This one isn't very useful when it's oriented like that because it's all overwritten. This is the RAND score for epsilon. Um, this is the bar chart for varieties. This is the UMAP. Here's the divergence. Um, here's also another, the UMAP with the references, the UMAP with just the clusters. And it looks like it didn't output the uh, horizontal land race bar chart. So we'll have to talk with Chash about that to get that to be outputted um, as opposed to the vertical one. And we can just minimize those so they're sort of easier to see. And then we can do post-processing items. So if I wanted to do a heat map of uh, a few different items, I could say select them here using control. And that will then do for these three. And I can choose my tick type here. So I'm just going to go with uh, divergence. 
Um, and then I can add another post processing if I want. Instead of a heat map, I could do a dendrogram, and I could do that for clusters, however many there are. So we could do it for cluster one. Um, and then if I wanted to do another post processing, I could also do the heat map plus the dendrogram. We'll just do that for cluster zero. And then I can run this analysis. I could keep adding post-processing as uh, was of interest. So it's going to run that analysis here. Also shows you, I believe, up top that it's running. We'll see how long it takes to complete. It's completed. And then you'll see that um, these items remain minimized that I was looking at before. Um, but now it has... Uh, outputted those other other items that uh, I requested and it keeps the uh, .csv at the top so you know I could look at these I could uh, download them um, whatever I want to do and then I can either delete this analysis or I can go, let's see if we go back to analyses, it just shows you that this is the analysis here that I did in the configuration I used. So I could create a new analysis and I could modify these parameters or modify the input files so that I would get a new, new output. And then if I want to go back, I can just click on this and it'll take me to the results for the analysis that I, I ran. Um, so that's what's been enabled so far in the prototype. Looking really forward to uh, um, this being demoed and then used and then, you know, tweaking things as needed, spotting bugs, and then launching with a, a broader user group. So, yeah, I think this is uh, nice and interested in, in people's feedback. Thanks, Chadish, for doing this.